Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned. 360 Designs unveils UAS broadcast platform, Collegiate Drone Racing National Championship, and Northrop Grumman opens new facility for development of autonomous systems. Hi, I'm Bree Cross. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned program, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned in partnership with AUVSI. The broadcast platforms of tomorrow may well be unmanned, and 360 Design has just introduced the Flying Eye, designed to be a virtual reality live streaming UAV. 360 Designs claims the vehicle is the world's first broadcast quality live streaming VR drone, offering as much as 6K resolution, as well as the ability to broadcast 360 degree video to YouTube, Facebook, ground receivers, a custom app, and other venues. Flying Eye offers applications for traditional TV style broadcasting, and the company claims it recently demonstrated how to extract a 2D high definition feed from the live 360 degree footage, adding that the system offers near uncompressed, low latency, 6K video, and has a streaming video range of more than five miles. A proprietary Breeze 6K wireless transmission system pairs with an integrated live stitching system, which ultimately removes the need and complexity of stitching 360 degree video footage for use at a later time. Flying Eye is built on a Matrice 600 hexacopter and offers choices of VR camera, a camera stabilization system, the Breeze wireless transmission and stitching system, which also includes the ground station, and a waterproof Pelican case. For those already operating Matrice 600 UAVs, they can also be updated to incorporate the Breeze system. You're watching Airborne Unmanned on Aero TV. We'll be back with more in a moment. Hi, I'm Brian Wynn, President and CEO of AUVSI, inviting you to witness the evolution of unmanned technologies at AUVSI's Exponential 2017 on May 8th through the 11th in Dallas, Texas. Exponential is the premier trade event dedicated to drones and robotics. See more than 650 manufacturers and solution providers in the largest exhibit hall this industry has to offer. Join us for more than 200 hours of sessions on key topics and issues such as commercial unmanned applications, public policy and legislation, beyond visual line of sight operations, counter UAS systems, data management, women and diversity in robotics, and much, much more. Welcome back. In the next Unmanned Minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. Arion Labs has announced that Bill McHale will serve as their new CEO. McHale assumed the role of CEO from Dave Crunch, the founder of Arion Labs, who will now serve as the company's first chief technology officer. XSTAR has announced that it has been selected once again by the U.S. Naval Air Systems Command to supply X-band satellite bandwidth for the MQ-4C Triton UAS. The blanket purchase agreement has a ceiling of $9.8 million and consists of a one-year base with four one-year options. Bowling Green, Ohio will begin using UAS to assist with engineering projects. The staff of Geographic Information System will use a DJI Phantom 4 Pro for projects involving tasks such as waterline replacements and road repaving. The UAS will be used only over the public right-of-way. Don't forget, Airborne Unmanned and the Aero News Network will be bringing you live interviews from the floor of Exponential 2017 on Tuesday afternoon and Wednesday morning, May 9th and 10th. Full broadcast schedules will be announced next week and posted to airborne-live.net. We look forward to seeing you all there. That was our Unmanned Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. The competitive landscape for the drone community is getting larger by the day and the most recent iteration involves the collegiate community in a new generation of UAS racing contents. The Purdue Drone Club hosted the first ever Collegiate Drone Racing National Championship on April 15, 2017. A landmark in collegiate drone racing, the sport of drone racing is currently one of the fastest growing sports in the nation, airing its first professional season on ESPN this past year. 
The race was a family-friendly event and promoted the education and use of drone technology to students and the community using video goggles, simulators, and a live feed video projection for spectators to interact with, giving them the opportunity to experience everything pilots go through in real life. But it's history now as Georgia Tech won the first collegiate drone racing national championship and in the process picked up more than $15,000 worth of equipment and prizes. Georgia Tech beat out 26 other universities and in total 48 pilots competed using their homemade UAS. The University of California Berkeley came in second place and Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University Daytona came in third place. Purdue University, which hosted the event, came in fourth place. Northrop Grumman opened their new Grand Sky Unmanned Aerial Systems business and aviation park that will be dedicated to the development of autonomous systems and other capabilities. The facility is 36,000 square feet, located near Grand Forks, North Dakota. At a recent opening ceremony, representatives from senators and a congressman, as well as other state and local dignitaries were there to see the program off to a proper start. Other attendees included Air Force personnel, community leaders, Red River Valley advocates, and executives from Northrop Grumman. Quote, we are delighted to officially begin operations here at Grand Sky, cementing our leadership in the development and use of autonomous systems in partnership with North Dakota's UAS community, says Corporate Vice President and President Northrop Grumman Aerospace Systems, Janice Pamajans, via a press release. Northrop Grumman also has plans on building a hangar so that it can take advantage of the park's access to the adjacent Grand Forks Air Force Base, which is home to a squadron of RQ-4 Global Hawk UAS. The Grand Sky facility is Northrop Grumman's second major facility in North Dakota, as the company also has a manufacturing site in Newtown, North Dakota. Well, that's our program for this week. In addition to this program, our daily Airborne Limited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed Monday through Friday. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and tweet us. Get comprehensive real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net and more information on the innovative world of all things unmanned at auvsi.org and airborne-unmanned.net. We'll see you next week.